All right, happy Wednesday. Hope you've had a wonderful day today. It's time for church. We're on page 365 in the church hymnal. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. <laughs> sick and going through circumstances and situation. Uh, those that we've been mentioning, I might fail to mention them tonight, the way my mind goes sometimes, but uh, they're on our heart and God knows. Specialists remember uh, Sister Terry's grandbabies, all three of them have been sick and the little one's uh, really sick and I know we serve a God that is able to reach down and touch and bring healing and strength. Let's remember Juanita, she's uh, had some problems this evening uh, with her condition that she's got and I know I serve a God that is able to touch, a God that is able to heal. All of our people that's been going through circumstances and situations are Jan Linda that's not able to be with us Sunday, Larry and Louise, Granny Faye, let's keep lifting up JC, Brother Larry Willard, let's keep lifting him up. All all those that's watching now, let's and who will watch later, let's pray one for another and encourage one another. I like the verse of that last the last verse of this song we just sung. It says, Was there a gift? Like the Savior given, will he refuse us a home in heaven? <clears throat> and I'm so thankful that he is the greatest gift that we could ever receive. Let's pray right now one for another. Let's pray for churches across the land. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for our missionaries that God will touch and that his word will go forth. And let's remember, as I encourage the church Sunday, let's remember to pray for the shoe boxes that have been sent and the Gideon Bibles that have been sent, that the Holy Spirit of God We'll place them right where they need to go. Pray one for another, and let's pray for our families. Father, we just thank you for your love and your goodness. I thank you for the opportunity, for the privilege, Lord, to be able to come to you right now. What a mighty God we serve. There's not a friend like the lowly Savior. I'm so glad, Lord, that you are our friend. You walk with us. You never leave us or forsake us, and I'm so thankful that you're ever there. Now, Lord, you know every need that's been mentioned, those that's on our heart, 
those that are listening right now and will listen later, you know their needs. And I pray, God, that you just minister, Lord. We, we, we come to you with praise and with thanksgiving, thanking you for the things you've already done, for the things you've already accomplished, and believing you, God, for the things that are needed in our life. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. I pray, God, for a revival to come in this last day, a revival that will touch our lost loved ones. God, open their eyes, open their understanding. How can no one not see? the things that are coming up on the face of the earth, Lord. I pray God stir them and move them and help them to see that they need you. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. Lord, I pray and thank you for our friends and uh, family and, and church family, Lord, that listen. I pray, God, you encourage them, lift them up, touch their heart, bless their homes, God. And we just thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles, be turning with us as we make our way in here to the table. Psalm chapter 9. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 9. God is so great. Now, as we said, as we started Psalms, when we began Psalms, and I mentioned it before, and I want to mention it again because we will talk about it some tonight. Uh, a lot of the Psalms is looking forward uh, to prophecy, looking forward to those things that's in the book of Revelation. And we forget that. Uh, I'm glad the Word of God can speak to me now as it speaks about future things too. And so <clears throat> Psalm chapter 9 speaks about David's life then. And it also, a lot of these verses look forward, as we'll see here in a little bit, look forward to when Christ shall come and shall set up and establish his millennial kingdom. And oh, what a day. Oh, what a day that's going to be. When that old devil is locked away, we don't have no worries or no fears in our king reigns and lives forever. And I am so thankful for that promise. Psalm chapter 9 and verse 1. It is the Psalms of David. Praise to God. Uh, David is giving him praise. He is the great deliverer. Don't ever forget that. <clears throat> I, told, I mentioned Sunday. Uh, a lot of times we let the devil come in with his doubts and his lies and his confusions and he'll get us down and discouraged and we forget that God is our deliverer. But God is for you. Whatever need you have, he is there for you, and he will bless you, and he will make a way for you. Uh, the psalm starts out with this. It says, I will praise you, O Lord. With my whole heart, I will show forth all your marvelous works. Now, David is praising the Lord for victory. He's given the Lord glory and honor. And he says, I'm going to do it with all my heart. <clears throat> the word of God, Jesus speaking to his disciples, spoke to them that they should worship the Lord their God with all their heart. And we need people in this last day, we need, we need to get our minds and our hearts set up on God, to forget about the things of this world, set them aside, and know that Jesus Christ is our all in all. Jesus Christ is all to me, as the hymn says, all I need all I need. So with his whole heart, David is praising God and he's showing forth his marvelous works. Now, <clears throat> we all face times of doubts, fears, confusions. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about going from faith to faith. <clears throat> and so we can look back in our life and we can see where God brought us from. I look back and I see the many times that I thought, God, how are we going to continue? How are things going to how things going to work? And I have seen his hand. I, when I look back, I can see his marvelous works that he done in my life. It's a wonderful thing to read about David and Moses and Elijah. I was just listening a while ago about Elisha and how God just, oh my, how he used him in a wonderful way. But God is the same God today. And God will do marvelous works and has done marvelous works in your life. The greatest thing that he's ever done is to save my soul from hell. Thank God he saved me, wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life, and he's made a place for me. Now not only are we looking here as David praises the Lord for victory, but one day Christ, <clears throat> when Antichrist arrives and he's coming, we see it setting up, we see it, I see it at an alarming rate, a speed that I could never have thought of how everything is setting up, looking for a man, looking for someone that's got the answers, and he'll come and everybody will think he's got the answers. 
But I want you to know when Antichrist sets up his kingdom and he begins in the middle of his reign and he begins to defy Christ and defy the Jews, you're going to see Christ destroy him. And you're going to see Christ bring total victory. Verse 2. The psalmist goes on and he says, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O you most high. Christ is the possessor of heaven and earth. All power. Don't ever forget that. All power and all authority is in his name. He is most high. There is nothing my God cannot do. There is nothing that the Lord can't work in your life. <clears throat> If it's impossible for you, Mary thought, and even asked the angel, how can these things be? How, this is an impossibility. How can it be? And the angel spoke to her and said, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Verse 3. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. At the name of Jesus. Oh, there's no sweeter words to whisper than the name of Jesus. When doubts and fears assail you, when confusion comes your way, and you think, God, what am I going to do? Just begin to call his name Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There's no sweeter name than that precious name, Jesus. And when you begin to call his names, the devil fears and trembles, because in his presence our enemies are turned back. One day we'll see, and we're going to read about it here in a little bit, but one day we'll see in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, we're going to be looking in verse 20 here in a moment of Revelation, uh, but we see Christ come and in just a moment with the sword from his mouth, destroy all of his enemies. In his presence, the enemies of God and your enemies cannot stand. Verse 4. For you have maintained my right and my cause... You sit in the throne judging right. It is the Lord who decides the victory. It is the Lord who is in charge. We forget that sometimes. We go telling God how to work this out and, and we go describing to him how we want to see him do or accomplish this and what we need to do is say, Lord, not my will but your will. And I know you're going to bring the best for me. So it is God's way. He is the one who decides victory. Verse 5. You have rebuked the heathen. You have destroyed the wicked. You have put out their name forever and ever. One day the wicked will be destroyed. One day their name will be erased. One day Antichrist, Satan, will be locked up in that bottomless pit and we won't have to worry anymore. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, we will be free from those things and free <clears throat> from our enemies. Verse 6. O oh, you enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end and you have destroyed cities, their memorial is perished with them. And he is saying, one day the enemies of God will destroy no more. One day the Antichrist, Satan, and his league will be locked up. And sin will be no more. Destruction will be no more. Death will be no more. And Christ shall reign and we shall live and reign with him. Oh, what a day. Oh, what a day. Verse 7, but the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. Now, I believe here he's looking forward to the time, speaking to the psalmist David, of the beginning of the kingdom age, which will commence just right after the Antichrist is defeated in, in Revelation chapter 19. And he comes and he establishes his kingdom and we live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. What a wondrous day. What a wondrous time when Christ sits upon that throne. There'll be holiness unto the Lord. Holiness will rule and reign. Righteousness of God will be in this world. Verse 8. And he shall, 
not might, he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people and uprightness. I want you to flip over with me to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Isaiah 9 and 6. You know these words very, very well. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. This is speaking of the time when Christ shall rule and reign. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Oh, how wonderful he is. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase, verse 7, of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There's going to be no end. For eternity, glory to God, it's hard for our human minds to grab a hold of that, but there's going to be no end. Verse 7 goes on upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord, the zeal of, the Lord of hosts <clears throat> will perform this. This is what God has promised. This is what his word has said will come to pass. And it will happen. It will be accomplished. It will take place just as he has said. Now flip over with me, if you will, to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I want to read just a few verses here for you real quickly. He's talking about the millennium. Well, Brother Doug, I don't believe in the millennium. Well, you just have to tie Revelation chapter 20 out of your Bible. Because here it is. I won't argue with you about it. But I'm planning on being there. By God's grace. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them who were beheaded. <clears throat> for the witness of Christ and for the word of God and which did not worship the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Talking about this time of tribulation. And they had came through. They had came through victorious. Uh, by God's grace, they had been sustained. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the kingdom age that we're talking about. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Speaking about the wicked dead to the unsaved. This is the first resurrection. And he tells us on in scripture, Blessed are they which have part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Death has no power over the child of God. Whom shall I fear or be afraid of? When it comes time to cross that river of death, glory be to God, he will be with me. His hand will sustain me and I do not have to fear death. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ <coughs> Excuse me, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now this is shouting ground right here, verse 7. If you'll, read, if you'll read all the way through. And when the thousand years, now Satan has been locked up, been cast into a bottomless pit. I didn't read that in verse 4. Been in a bottomless pit, but listen, verse 7. When the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. He shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now can you imagine after a thousand years that this many people would be deceived by the devil? Well, look how the devil is deceiving people today. With all the signs of God's word being fulfilled, all the things that are taking place that people can plainly see that the word of God is true, it is yea, it is everlasting, yet they follow and they listen to Satan's devices and they will not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In this day, when Satan is released for just a time, just a moment, he's going to go forth and he's going to deceive 
so many. Verse 9, And they went up the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Now listen to how quickly God deals with this. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I, no time. God destroys his enemies. Verse 10. And the devil, that old slew foot, that old serpent, who I have grown to despise and hate, who has tripped me up so many times, not because of Christ, but because of my own craziness, that old devil, that enemy who deceived these people is going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now, he's never going to be set free again after this time, and that's shouting ground. I want you to catch this. A lot of people say, well, hell is a place you'll go and you'll burn up. Well, if you'll go back in, in chapter 19, you'll see that the, that the beast and the false prophet was already cast in this lake of fire. And the word tells us here in verse 10 where the beast and the false prophet are. They're still there and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Glory be to God. We will have total victory and Christ shall uh, rule and judge as verse 8 tells us. All right, let's look back at verse 9 now <clears throat> of Psalms chapter 9, 99. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. The things I just read to you, we're coming to a time here as I just read to you where there'll be no more oppressed. Ain't that wonderful? Oh, glory to God. That don't put a streak of glory down in your heart and your soul. To think there's going to be a day and a time when oppression will be known. There is such oppression in this day and time. I see it in so many faces, so many people. But there is coming a day and a time when there's going to be no more oppression. We are going to have a refuge with Jesus Christ. He told his disciples in St. John chapter 14, I'm going away. If I go away, I'm going to come again. I'm going to receive you unto myself that where I am there ye Maybe also, he tells them that in my father's house are many mansions and he's gone and he's prepared a place for us. Verse 10. And they who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken them who seek you. In Christ Jesus, we are preserved forever. I want you just to stop and think. I was talking about what a wonderful name his name is. You have no concern that Christ will ever let you down. You can put your total trust. Man will let you down. Your plans and your designs will let you down. Christ, oh hallelujah. Our Lord, our Savior, will never let you down. You can trust in His name. I'm glad I know His name. Glory to God. I'm glad I know that name, that I can call upon that name Jesus. And He is there, very present, to hear my need. And He will never forsake me. Verse 11. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he makes inquisition for blood, he remembers them. He forgets not the cry of the humble. God's going to avenge. You don't have to take vengeance. God's going to avenge. God's going to avenge all the righteous. He's going to punish all the oppressors. All those who have done wrong, and this will take place at the beginning of the kingdom age that we just read about. Verse 13. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them who hate me. You, you who list me up from the gates of death. Now, again, I, I see two things here that God is speaking to our hearts. I see that he's speaking 
to us now. I am thankful that God is our deliverer. When it seems like Satan has us caught. Now, you might not ever feel trapped. You might not ever feel like you've got to that place, but I've been there many a times. And I felt like, God, what am I going to do? But he always, always, and will always make a way of an escape. He will be, He will lift me up. I love that. You who lift me up from the gates of death. Glory be to God. <clears throat> I'm so glad you can be feeling down and sold in in spirit. You lift your hand up. You began to praise and magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You began to think of the wondrous things that He's done in your life and the things that He's bringing to pass and, and the place that He has prepared for you. And He lifts you up. Glory be to his name. Now also, there's coming a day and a time that we didn't read in Revelation chapter 19. There's coming a day and a time when it, when Israel, God's people, seems like they're destroyed. The enemy thinks that they have them, they have them surrounded, and they have them destroyed, ready to just wipe up. And the King of Kings and Lord of Lords comes riding upon, oh hallelujah, that wonderful horse comes riding with that sword of the Spirit coming out of his mouth. Glory be to God, which is the Word of God. And with a word, he destroys his enemies and he lifts Israel up from the very gates of death. Verse 14. That I may show forth all your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in your salvation. Israel at this time will accept Christ. You can read it in Zechariah 13 and 1. We won't try to turn there. Israel will see that this is Messiah. This is the one who, whom they refuse and they turned aside. And at this moment, Israel will be saved and Israel will turn to the Lord. Verse 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made and the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Verse 16, The Lord is known by the judgment which he executes. The wicked, again with the same thought as verse 15, The wicked is snared and the work of his own hands. Hegla, Sila. And these two words is talking about meditate, think. In other words, upon what God's word has just said. So let's stop and think about this. <clears throat> I think about how many times God's enemies and the enemies of God's people will try to lay a pit, will try to bring destruction to God's people. And, and they have a well-worked-out plan that they think is going to work, but God will get in the arrangements. We sing the song, and he'll turn that thing around. When I think about that, I think about Haman, and I think about how the gallows was built for him. But instead of him being hung upon the gallows, his enemy was the one that was hung there. God turns things around for his people. Don't ever get discouraged. Don't ever get to the place that you think God has forgotten you. God has forsaken you. Don't ever think that Satan's plans is, is going to win out. They're not going to. God will turn that thing around upon him and he will be destroyed in the very pit, the very problem that he made for you. He will fall therein and your enemy will fall therein and God will lift you up as he told us in the previous verse from the gates of death think on these things it's so easy to get in doubt it's so easy to get dismayed when things in this world come but just stop and think about the goodness of God and how that he has never and will never leave you nor forsake you verse 17 the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Every nation that sides with Antichrist, that every nation that has turned their back on God, one day will be turned into hell. One day shall be destroyed. Verse 18, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not 
perish forever. God will make a way. Arise, O Lord, verse 19. Let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in your sight. Man and man's plans will not prevail. I seen some well laid plans that I thought, surely, man, this thing's going to prosper. This is just going to be great and wonderful. And it came to destruction because it was not God's plan. It was not God's way. We must walk in His way. Verse 19. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in your sight, and judged they shall be. Verse 20. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but man. Say law. There is no power besides the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. He is not man. He is all-powerful. He created all things, and by Him all things that uh, have been made and have been prepared for His glory and for His honor, and He is our Lord, and He is our Savior. Can we pray? Father, I pray, Lord, if there's one who listens now or listens later that does not know You as Lord and Savior, they do not have the assurance of their salvation. Let them this moment believe. Let As the Spirit draws them, let them believe in the finished work of the cross. There accept that payment that you made for our sins. Repent of their sins. Accept that forgiveness. And the law of the Spirit began to work in their lives and in their hearts. Help them to trust in you, Lord, for salvation. And help them to see, God, that you love them with an everlasting love. And, Lord, that you're there for them. I pray, Lord, for your church, for your people in this last day. I ask, God, that you help us to lift our heads up. Help us not to go around defeated. Help us not to go around with our heads hung down. But help us to see we are children of Almighty God. And when we call upon the name of Jesus, you are there to hear and answer our prayers. And that you always will. Lord, you will lift us up. Oh, hallelujah. You will lift us up from the gates of death. And I'm so thankful. You will get in the arrangements and the trap that the enemy has laid for us. Oh, hallelujah. You'll trap him in it. And you'll make a way and escape for us. I'm so thankful. And we pray, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Touch my brothers, touch my sisters, friends, loved ones that's watching other churches, uh, that's our fellow churches. I pray, God, that you uplift them. God, that you encourage, touch their precious pastors. And Lord, I pray, God, for an anointing as never before. Send a revival in this land in this last day. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you so much. Just thanking God for His goodness, for His grace. Continue to pray one for another and continue to lift one another up. Hopefully Sunday. Uh, you're hearing like I am about bed, bad weather, but I'm believing it's going to come in Saturday morning and get gone quickly. Hopefully we'll be able to have Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 11. Uh, and what would even be great if the Lord Jesus came? Oh, hallelujah. Wouldn't that be wonderful before Sunday came and we could just meet together up in heaven? We love you so much. You're such a blessing to us. I wish I could hug every one of you. Uh, you're just such a blessing, and we love you. God bless your heart.